That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about RMN, the fifth film directed by Christian Munju, a uh, titan of the Romanian New Wave, uh, which premiered at the 2022 Cannes Film Festival in competition, uh, is being released courtesy of IFC Films on April 28th, 2023. Do you know Christian's other films? Mm -hmm. uh, he won the Palme d'Or in 2007 for four months, three weeks, and two days. Uh, he also, I think, won scripts. He was script director at Cannes for Beyond the Hills, which I, is my favorite of his. And then 2016's Graduation is, I also recommend, but that's probably my least favorite of, and I haven't seen his very first film. Uh, but he is a uh, technician of bleak cinema. And I'm really into that, and I quite like this film, even though it went at home empty-handed again. I thought this movie was excellent, but it's it's depressing. It's not. In, I mean, it's not entertaining. It's it's a and yeah, <laughs> it, it's bleak, and the description of the film makes no sense. A non-judgmental analysis of the driving forces of human behavior when confronted with the unknown, of the way we perceive the other, and how we relate to an unsettling future. <laughs> Like, what does that mean? But the basic story uh, set in modern time in like... 2019, this, 2020. In this little village in Transylvania. Mm -hmm. And... And the local populace is made up of Romanians, Hungarians, and... Germans. Germans, mostly, yeah. I guess, I mean, it's there's a lot happening, but I guess the basic story is that this village, there's a bakery. Mm -hmm. And the bakery hires two, ultimately three gentlemen from Sri Lanka to work there and they're not like I mean they've they're they're there legitimately like they have the proper paperwork to work and the village is like these people are just like most of them are just racist against these immigrants it basically becomes a witch hunt like anything ill that's been going on in the town like animals dying they blame on them so the main character we focus on is a guy named Matthias mm -hmm. played by Marin Grigor so we see him the film opens with him in Germany working at like a slaughterhouse and then he gets into an altercation with someone and fight like her injures them so he flees back to his village. And he is married and has a kid, but his wife can't stand his ass and the kid has emotional issues. It opens with the kid seeing something disturbing in the woods that has caused him to be mute, and we don't find out what that is until very late in the film. And then Matthias is having an affair with the woman who runs the bakery. Chilla, played by Judith State. But everything culminates with a pretty amazing scene where, like, the community gets together in, like, a town hall to discuss. I mean, discuss is not the best word. Just <laughs> scream at each other mm -hmm. about the um, two foreign gentlemen, three, who are working at the bakery. And... They think that they can just vote to, like, remove these people. And then there's a... I mean, there's a hate crime that's committed where, like, some guys wearing, like, clan masks show up and throw, like, a Molotov cocktail in the housing of these three gentlemen. And then it ends with... It's very random. I mean, it doesn't really re resolve anything. The woman running the bakery says that she's going to... Like, she got a job in Germany, so she's leaving. Mm -hmm. And she takes the Sri Lankan men, like, to safety. And they, their last night in town is in this prison. They're yeah, <laughs> like, for safety, and then they're going to be transferred to a different town. And then Matthias goes to see her, and at first we think he's going to harm her, because mm -hmm. he has a gun, and she seems alarmed, and she starts crying and walks outside, and she lives... The entire village is, like, in the woods. So she's out in the woods, and she thinks Matthias is going to shoot her, and I, and I did too. And then all of a sudden we see there's a huge bear behind her. So he goes to shoot the bear and chases the bear. And then all of a sudden we see like four huge bears. Like at the end of Harry and the Hendersons. It was pretty creepy. <laughs> and then he turns around and then the film ends. Um, so it's, it's, it's very random. But I think the themes... It evokes, like, it's it, it's very uh, provocative, I think. It's provocative, it, like, almost like the bears of these predators that have... Because the film, after that kid runs away with, with whatever Rudy, we don't know what he sees, the, we get the shot of all these sheep, and I think that's metaphor a metaphor for these, these people are all ignorant sheep, and nature is coming to kind of ravage them almost. Yeah, there's a lot of symbolism. 
Overall, I was super frustrated watching it. Not, I mean, technically I think the film is excellent, but it, just like these characters and how they're behaving, they're so ignorant and, but, so the little kid, Rudy, Matthias' son, who went mute because he saw something in the woods, we find out that he says he saw a man hanging from a tree. Which is, ends up being a premonition. Because we find <laughs> out, so Matthias, his dad, Papa Otto, I think mm -hmm. they're calling him, he ends up committing suicide by hanging himself from a tree. Which I thought was funny that, so little Rudy, who looks like maybe he's eight, he walks to school every day walking through these woods. And then we find out that that it's known there are bears in the woods. Like, why are you letting this little boy walk through this these woods with these bears in it? There are bears, and they all they are also cautious about, um, as, as in the terminology of this film, the gypsies that they run out of town returning. But I think it's just the irony of these people being so hateful towards others when it's like you're all in the same boat, like. You're all sort of like in a spot that you weren't originally supposed to be in, as you think. And then the real gag is the reason these three men from Sri Lanka needed to be hired is because no one in the village either wants to work for those wages or the villagers all leave to go to other countries to work. Or the ones that are in the village and not working get more... They uh, collect like public assistance. Including such as Matthias because... Uh, Chilla says you should get a job at the bakery. And he's like, I'd rather do Just what I collect I'm... <laughs> my yeah, collect my. But he's what's so frustrating is because he's this kind of this apathetic, you know, one of the the centers of the story. And he the the reason he gets in fisticuffs at the factory in Germany is because that man disparagingly refers to him as a gypsy. Right. Because so he... he's this person in between. Sorry, that is. Uh, because one of his parents was uh, German, I guess. So people kind of treat him a certain way too. Right. But the, it's the, like the irony and the hypocrisy of it all is what makes it so frustrating. Like you've been treated poorly and then you get back home and then you treat others and the, and then not being self-aware. Like Matthias is not a hardworking, good person because him having this extramarital affair and not treating his wife correct, you know, like he's kind of abusive to her. And then the opening of the film, well, not the opening, but early on in the film, we see that after, Matthias bumps into the lady. What's her name? Who runs the bakery? Uh, Mrs. Dennis. Who plays her? Uh, Orloya or Azro Azro Az Azrolia Moldovia. I thought she was. I thought everyone was very good. I actually. really liked. I liked both the ladies. Yeah, everyone was very good. Mm -hmm. But um, he like sneaks up to her house because she 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 bump. He goes to see her at her job. Oh, that's the that's the factory owner. The one you're talking about is Chilla. Played by Judith. Yeah, Day. I'm talking about Chilla. Mm -hmm. So he bumps into her and it's clear that they used to have like a little fling. And then he realizes like she's a boss now and that she like has this, she has her parents' house that she renovated. So she's doing well. And then the next scene is him like creeping around her house like a peeping Tom. He's masturbating. masturbating while she's playing the cello, I think. She drinks a lot of wine and plays the cello at night. Mm -hmm. But I thought those scenes were really interesting. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. Continue. I, uh, I lost my train of thought. Maria Dragus, who is in graduation, has a very small part in that. And there's also a man of work who works for a French NGO that is uh, there to survey the bear population. Which I <laughs> which has relevance mm -hmm. because during the town hall meeting, they're like, oh, so we're paying some foreigner to come count our bears, even though like the bears are what, ki are, what are killing our livestock. Mm -hmm. And... It's like just any reason to be mad about anything. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then the, 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 that scene, which is in one single shot, which I forget how long it is, but it is fantastic. It's like 15 minutes, oh, 15, it's, 20 minutes. It's, it's very well done. It's so good. But the, the townsfolk are basically saying it's a, a matter of hygiene. And even the town doctor... The is, town doctor is saying some dumb shit, like how people... I mean... They're, they're, they have different kind of health... Um, like immunity and, yeah. and different virology yeah. and so it's a matter of hygiene so it's like oh my god and of course this is pre-pandemic but it's just like oh these these stupid dumb dumbs but, but, but when the factory owner says like well what if we make them wear gloves and it's just like no matter what you come up with they're like if someone finally says don't you hear us we just don't want them here right but then it's like you also all leave to go other to other countries to work but then they say well we're not savages and it's like and half of them aren't from this town anyway but, but then it's just so like the only decent people in the film are the bakery owner and manager and the three Sri Lankan gentlemen. 
<laughs> like, and I did really like those scenes because uh, Chilla becomes kind of close with them. She goes to have dinner with them. It's a very nice time. That was an upsetting scene because they have dinner like because it's around Christmas time mm-hmm. and they're having a lovely time and it, and it really felt genuine. Like she felt like you know she wanted to get the she was appreciative of these men. Mm-hmm. And then while they're enjoying their dinner, that's when the Molotov cocktail. Busted. I think it's a brick on fire or, or a brick, something, something like that. But I think the film, so the film, it felt a little tedious in the beginning because it's like, what is this about? But it's it's all very well done. But the tides turn when there's like a party and Matthias is there with his three raggedy ass friends Mm -hmm. and they start saying really racist stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized like, oh, this movie's going to be about that. Mm -hmm. So it was an interesting ride. Isn't it fascinating to realize that America isn't the only place that has a, a kind of problem with this uh, xenophobia and this mm, ignorant rhetoric. Well, we also get shots of like, because I, I believe it's the manager of the bakery is on like a message board, like a, like a Facebook group, seeing all the hateful comments people mm-hmm. are making. And it's like, it looks like YouTube comments or like, you know, yeah. it all felt very familiar. Um, it's so the name is an acronym for a nuclear magnetic resonance test because Father Otto, uh, Matthias. Papa, Papa Otto, he finds him collapsed at the table. So he goes and gets a brain scan, uh, if you will. And that is what uh, Manju is trying to get at. That, that we're scanning for the problem, but you can't see what's wrong. Because you can't, there's no test to uh, examine the depth of despair and ignorance that's uh, happening in any given community. Yeah. Well, uh, what would you give? Well, how did you feel about how it looked? Oh, I loved how it looked. Yeah. Shot by Tudor Vladimir Panduru who uh, previously shot shot graduation um, for Manju and also Malmkrog uh, for Christy Piu, another very notable new uh, Romanian new wave director who I also highly recommend if you haven't seen any Christy Piu films, especially Aurora. Um, And also another recent film I quite liked. I think it's a French Romanian co-production called Metronome. Uh, Yes, loved how it looked. Um, And with all of his films, it takes a while to Manju to get into them, uh, you know, for months three weeks and two days is a very bleak uh abortion drama uh and i i think he's also contemplating you know straddling the the end of Ceausescu, Ceausescu, right in romania and i think there's something to be said about these ex-communist countries and you know with the, with this iron curtain suddenly lifted how all these kind of bizarre behaviors come out in populations that are resisting now i'm not going to be told what to do we're not going to go back to communism so now i can be racist <laughs> Like, I, I think there's a there's a lot of uh, commentary going on there. But, uh, oh, and Beyond the Hills is just, to me, that's a five-star film. But uh, that is about these two lesbians, and one of them has become a nun, and the other one tries to kind of rescue the other one from the convent. They are difficult to watch, uh, for sure, and this one is too. What would you give this movie? Uh, four and a half. It was my favorite film out of Cannes this year. Uh, it took forever to come out. I, I know it's a hard sell, it's a hard watch, but I loved it. I would give it four out of five. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye.